So another rare or, or rather considered rare route of drug administration to you guys will be the intratecal route of drug administration. All right. Now, I, I, I mentioned the word red or rare is because um, most people are just conversant with the uh, uh, intramuscular route of drug administration through the buttocks. It could be that the oral route of drug administration by swallowing drugs. It could be that they are conversant with the words intravenous. That's true. Giving uh, that's by giving blood through the veins. Right. So I'm here to tell you guys that as a medical student, there are other red routes of drug administration that you need to know. All right. It could be that throughout your time of practice, you might not use them, but at least you should know that such a thing exists. All right. And one of these is the intratecal route of drug administration. After this, we'll be talking about the intraventricular route of drug administration. Now, what is intratecal route of drug administration? You can see this. Um, this is what intratecal, intratecal, and intratecal is basically you administering drug directly to the spinal canal understand or the subarachnoid space so that it can reach the cerebrospinal fluid all right so what is the full uh talk on intratecal route of drug administration we said that intratecal administration is a route of drug administration where the drug is injected directly into the spinal canal or the subarachnoid space okay so now if the drug is injected directly into the spinal canal and the subarachnoid space what is a possible fluid that can actually transport this drug, this drug? Because now you are not actually dealing with blood. Okay? So the possible fluid that is in the spinal canal is the cerebrospinal fluid. All right? So if you are administering drugs to the spinal canal directly or the subarachnoid space, then you, you might you are like basically trying to like reach the cerebrospinal fluid. Okay? So now it is used for spinal anesthesia, chemotherapy or pain management okay so the drug is delivered to the cerebrospinal fluid within the intratecal space of the spinal column okay so the spinal canal is also known as the intratecal space right so if you are administering drugs here directly you are trying to reach out to the cerebrospinal fluid directly okay so guys you can see this is uh, intratecal this one is a pump device but it could be injection too that's where you have cases of what? Lumbar puncture. And then this one now is with what? Cystenal puncture, okay? So we spoke about all these concepts when we were talking about anatomy videos, but um, now is basically the application of this. So if you ask, what, is, what are the advantages of the intratecal route of drug administration? Uh, now, this is you administering drug directly to the cerebrospinal fluid so that you transport it to the site of action. Now, this will make the blow, uh, the, the drug reach the site of action being much more concentrated, all right? Instead of you administering this drug through the oral route, you have all this first pass effect, you have gastric juices acting on the drug, thereby reducing the effect of the drug, okay? So this one now, you are administering the drug directly to the cerebrospinal fluid, and it will just go straight up, okay? You know that substances from the blood will be seeped into the cerebrospinal fluid, but some of them might be, some of them might uh, undergo some membrane, some barrier, some limitations, right? And they might not actually reach the cerebrospinal fluid in full. That's if you administer this drug through the intravenous route, so that this drug through the blood can reach the cerebrospinal fluid, okay? So if you administer this drug directly to the cerebrospinal fluid, you are basically taking the drug, you are making the journey easier for the drug, okay? So those are the advantages, all right? And these advantages could be that, okay, uh, you're actually injecting this place, you are piercing tissue, so there could be tissue damages, there could be pain, there could be swelling, there could be inflammation, do you understand? And uh, another disadvantage could be that if you give a wrong drug into the cerebrospinal fluid, for you to retrieve that drug is almost impossible. Because this drug has already gone in. Do you understand? And if you give extra dosages of drugs, then you can't actually retrieve them because these drugs have gone in. They have flown away. Do you understand? So it is not easily controlled. Okay? Exposure to the drug is not easily controlled. Right? So guys, this is the intratecal root of drug administration. Talking about the advantages and 
the disadvantages okay so guys see you guys in the next tutorial and bye for now in the next video we'll be talking about the intraventricular route of drug administration which is basically administering drugs directly to the cerebral ventricles and this will bring us to the end of roots of drug administration i think we've spoken like about roughly 15 roots of drug administration all right if you want to access other videos just go to the description of this video and you see a playlist has been featured there click on it and flex your soul all right